<clears throat> well, we've got no time for that now. No, oh, well, too late, isn't it? Oh, for goodness sake. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm away for uh, moments and you've put on Monkey Island? Why? It's not as good as the original. Oh, and it's on the PlayStation 2. I mean, completely unsuited for something like that. <sighs> no, it's your choice, mate. Nope. Not really for the reason. Out. Right. It's 360 time. Oh, right. Hope you had a little break there and managed to book you some holidays and get yourself prepared and clear your diary for the rest of these collection videos because we're going to rattle on. I've changed the game in the background. I hope I've changed the game in the background. Nothing appears to be happening. Ah, there we go. Square Enix. Can it mean one thing? This is Final Fantasy X2, whatever that is, because I have absolutely no idea what it's about. There's no manual which doesn't help the situation either, and it's that sort of game that I don't particularly enjoy. Um, why did I buy it? I don't know. It was at a car boot sale for absolutely nothing. So that'll be running away in the background there. Help the situation and made a strategy. Let's take the lid off the crate. Uh, that is the top of the lid, which gives you an idea of how big the crate is. Uh, oh dear. And of course, oh, being me, I should be doing this in alphabetical order, but I'm not. Uh, so the reason we're not doing alphabetic order is because um, the crates are the wrong way around and they are simply too heavy for me to pick up and move about. Also, the fact that the way I've packed it is all the uh, earlier uh, alphabetical numbers are on the bottom and all the newer ones are on the top. So we may be going backwards here. I'm just going to pull this stuff out. I can't really honestly remember how much I'm going to do. I'm probably going to do a layer here and call it a day on this video and then the next video I'll do will be the rest of it, which will be the other... 825,000 games I've got here. So I'm just going to pull these out and just go through these very, very quickly. <laughs> oh dear. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Name a song. Right, let's start off then. So we got, first of all, Smackdown vs. Raw 2007. With uh, old Nipple H on the front. Smackdown vs. Raw games as good as Smackdown games? I don't know. Somewhere between the two. Ray Mysterio on the back. He's still around, isn't he? I think. And he's Triple H. Hang on there. Can't tell you how much I paid for it because I can't remember. That long ago. Oh, dear God. That's no good. Alright. Oh, dear. Just going to have to chuck these down here and see how we get on next up. Oh, dear. Never work with children, animals, and middle aged men who should know better. Legends of WrestleMania. There's uh, the Hulkster, Steve Austin, Andre the Giant, The Rock, Jimmy Hart, and Bobby the Brain Heenan on the front there. Uh, this game I played on the PlayStation 3 and I couldn't get to grips with it, and most people sort of slagged it off. So I'm not sure whether it's any good or not. Um, I like the idea of the fact you could sort of go through the old Wrestlemanias and they were putting some of the old commentary on there and uh, but when I got to play in the game it was a bit a bit naff nice idea showing about the execution but you can tell it about a lot of games uh, next up from Sega Viking um, Battle for Asgard not sure I've not, never actually played this one Again, I don't think I paid a lot for it. Maybe a pound, something like that. A game I've never heard of before. Anybody's played it? Let me know in the bottom. Now, I love this series. Absolutely one of my favourite series of all time. Uh, load. I don't know. Is that what you're going to do? I oh, will just sit there doing that then. Uh, Virtual Tennis 2009. From Sega. And you'll find a lot of Sega games in my collection because I'm an absolute massive fan of Sega. And I love virtual tennis games. Absolutely uh, a lot of fun. That's moving. Good. Um, probably the best best tennis series, I think, ever. Uh, Super Tennis on Super Nintendo is one of my favourite games, but this is probably, of all the ones, you know, Grand Slam Tennis, 
uh, the match point series what's the other one that came out uh, Top Spin this is definitely the, the game for that one it's more arcadey if you ever played the original arcade game I used to play hours playing that I hate tennis if I hate tennis it's enough to inspire me to play tennis on a computer um, this one I got for a quid in a charity shop Viva Piñata which is actually ironically it was one of the games when I was going to buy my th we were sort of debating whether to buy a 360 or not in the first place and chose a PlayStation 3. This was actually one of the packing games in the 360. Not exactly inspiring, is it? Uh, but yeah, Viva Piñata. I think there's a second game to this as well. Honestly, um, I think it probably helps to be sort of whacked out on something at this when you're playing that game because it made absolutely no sense to me at all. Uh, number two of the games I've not been influenced by the cover whatsoever in the slightest. This is Wet. Game I've also got the PlayStation 3. It's a really good game, actually. Uh, again, you know, not expensive to pick up. If you're after sort of like um, uh, sort of first person hack and slash shooting type thing, sort of Lara Croft without the archaeology aspect. All action fun, this really is good. Lock and load, definitely worth it. If you haven't got this one yet, any 360 or PlayStation 3, pick it up. Um, Wolfenstein, which I got out of the cash converters, which I know will never work. Uh, 16 people who bought this game and took it back. Uh, I was the 17th to buy it. That's what that number is there for. And when I got home, basically a couple of divots in it. You can see, they see it there at the top two markings yep it's going to need basically sort of concrete cement to go in that to be able to fill it for it to work um, I'm keeping it because one day I may get the, may get the, uh, the loose disc version of it so I've got the manual and the the box complete anyway um, but yeah I mean how they brought that in and, and just didn't notice those divots at the top I mean it's, it's got a lot of surface scratches on it as well but even so I mean that's great chunks missing out of it it's absolutely bloody shocking that that's the problem with some of these places, they don't leave the discs in the boxes when you inspect them and then when they put the discs in the boxes you're chasing, you know, chanting your arm on it. Are they going to give you, you know, what it is? Um, that's not that one, WW2K13, which I'm sure is a lot better than 2K20. It's got CM Punk on the front. One thing I do like is my... I do like wrestling games. But I think as the series had gone on, it's just a bit more... I don't know, not quite as fun. Now this was interesting, because I thought, well, I'll get this anyway, because it was only 49p in the charity shop. So this is uh, WW2K15. However, on closer inspection, it's not only WW2K15 manual, but it's actually LEGO Super Heroes disc inside it. So this is fantastic, because that's like a six quid game, usually. I don't think there's two discs on it. I'm hoping there's not. No, there's only one disc, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so if I ever manage to find a copy of this uh, 2K15 loose, and if I can find the box and the manual for LEGO Super Heroes, I'm absolutely um, made up. And like I said, that was 49p. So there's an example there to always check the box uh, if you're in a charity shop or something like that, disc isn't there, because sometimes you find stuff which you don't, and like that um, Need for Speed game being in that uh, other game, that sniper game. Again. Check that the reason I bought that game was because the Need for Speed game was in there. Uh, and then finally, WWE All Stars, which is a lot of fun. Actually, one of the better wrestling games, but it's actually less wrestling and more sort of um, exaggerated Street Fighter. It's sort of wrestling, but like with Street Fighter Final uh, Street Fighter elements with it. Uh, did, well, it was meant to be the bonus million dollar pack with the million dollar man down though, but that's already been used. And again, didn't pay much for this at all. And I've got this on the Wii, and it's it's tremendously good fun. It sort of it's, restores your faith a little bit with wrestling games. It certainly did with me, anyway. Ugh. Right, next pile. Oh. Better if I do it this way, actually. Uh, Vanquish from Sega. Again, a game which is not expensive to pick up at all. Uh, I'm not saying all Sega games are great, but this is really good fun. It is also backwards compatible with Xbox One. And again, a lot of 360 games can be used that way. I've got, you know, someone's been been around and sort of made the time to put a sticker on it and say, yeah, you can backwards compatible this. 
this is great, you know, the fact you can do this, it just sort of adds to the, the longevity. Keeps people coming back for more. UFC 2009 Undisputed, another game I've also got on other systems. Complete with manual, it's UFC fighting. This was the last one I think before EA took the license. I used to watch UFC when it first started and then I sort of lost interest in it. It sort of became a bit boring. Sometimes the fights are explosive. And people can disagree with this. Some of the fights are really explosive. It's like, wow. And then sometimes they just sort of grab hold of each other and try and choke each other out for the rest of the fight. And sometimes it's a bit boring. So, yeah, when, when it's explosive exciting, it's great. But when it's not, it's not. Uh, this one is Transformers Rise of Dyke. The Rise of? Rise of the Dark Spark. I'm not a massive fan of Transformers. I've got a lot of Transformers going for somebody who's not a massive fan of Transformers. I wasn't even interested in Transformers as a kid as much, really. But, people do say these games are actually a lot better than the films. And let's be honest with you, watching a blank screen will be a lot better than some of the films. So, I'm interested to give that one a go. This one, I think I got quite cheap recently, or in the last few months or so. This is the Explorer edition of Tomb Raider. I may actually be thinking of the PlayStation 3 version. I'm not sure. Judging by the residue which is still on here, I'm guessing this may have been a... No, it's not. No. I might be talking at my arse there. I'm not quite sure. I mean, who doesn't love Lara Croft games? And if you grew up with these sort of things, these are just absolutely fantastic, aren't they? Absolutely fantastic. There we go. Uh, if that's not enough for you, there's uh, Tomb Raider Underworld. I think I did pick up recently uh, from Cash Converters. I've been writing on the bloody discs again. No manual. Again, I don't think I paid a huge amount for it. Oop. Now I've got quite a lot of Tom Clancy games uh, on the Xbox. So I've got some more on the 360. This is Splinter Cell Conviction, which is the Shadow Edition. I don't think there's a manual with that one, but I think again this was sort of like dirt cheap, 50p, something like that. Some people like the, the, the Clancy game, some people don't. I'm sort of in between the two. Uh, this is backwards compatible Xbox One, this is Rainbow Six Vegas, which I had originally for the PlayStation 3. Didn't particularly enjoy it, there's also no manual with that one as well. Oh, a bit of a run with no manuals here. It's not good. But if you love your stealth games, I mean, you can't go wrong with it, any of these sort of series. Uh, this is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier Signature Edition. Which does have a manual. Hurrah! <laughs> and it's also better with Connect. I mentioned the Connect sensor earlier. This isn't a Connect game, but you can use the Connect sensor to play it with. And there's also um, some. Uh, freebies in there as well codes by the looks of it oh, yeah. not expensive at all these games Tom Clancy very very cheap to pick up uh, this one I picked up originally and then I managed to find it on the Xbox so this is a 360 version of Advanced uh, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter I picked up recently on the, on the Xbox and uh, I was surprised because that was a very late re late release on the Xbox and this probably would have been a fairly early release on the 360. Fascinatingly enough, but I've been told that's not actually all that common and I'm just sort of like being surprised for no reason whatsoever. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm happy to be stunned to be connect uh, connected, corrected on these things. Uh, winner of over 75 awards, it's Titanfall. Which has no manual. So this is what I mean about you could be a bit more still I'm much 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 more selective now than I was back then. Having said that, I don't know when I bought this game. It could have been two, three months ago, it could have been six, eight months ago, it could have been twelve months ago. I've got absolutely no idea. Um But yeah, good game. Enjoy that one. This one I, I really, really like. Uh, and I've also got a version of this on uh, on the Xbox. And this is Thief nice embossed lettering on the front cover there with no manual 
this is not a lucky box this one but yes I mean it's just a, it's just a, a fascinatingly good game I think this is probably the better one I play this one and opposed to the Xbox one I think I prefer this one but yeah it's quite interesting this one I, I, I went into a charity shop and they got loads of these games they got about 10 copies of this and they were all at the same bloody price 30 pink. I don't think there's anything, any value to them whatsoever otherwise they bought a lot um, and I never even heard of it and this is the last remnant which is quite interesting because it's a Square Enix game which is obviously who I've got behind me and it weighs a ton there's a thick manual, thick manual and there's ooh, discs yes yeah, two discs with it disc one and disc two let's do that for you so you can see that there so there's the manual and there's disc two and there's disc one I think all the other way around I don't know hope there's not a disc three otherwise I'm going to be in trouble um, uh, yeah got no idea no idea whatsoever but there was a so load of these in the charity shops and I just bought one I'm not going to buy multiples I don't think there was any value in it to be honest with you uh, here's a connect game for you uh, and I love this this is the gunstringer what a quirky little game this is absolutely lovely copy of this one uh, if you do get a chance I think it's about 150 this is get hold of it it's just it's just great cartoony uh, not a lot to it but there's a great little story and it's 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 a really fun introduction to it as well I urge you to track it down you you will not regret it and like I said it, it's absolutely pence uh, one of the reasons I collected for 360 in the first place which I mentioned ages ago was the fact that I wanted to pick up special editions and, and um, you know steel books so this is the limited edition of the evil within which I've shown up probably about three times now on this channel um, and it's got this lovely sort of um, lenticular cover it's a word I've learned since uh, since starting on YouTube it's a word I've learned am I gonna get everything out yes I am so there is the lenticular cover in all its glory uh, there's a notebook for making notes and there's also a copy of the game now I've been told and this includes this includes the fighting chance pack and it's also got a reversible cover as well I've also been told this is the sort of game that you uh, don't play in the dark we play with all the lights on and with people in the house and next door just in case you get scared too much by it so I'm never going to play it <laughs> never going to play it but I mean that was I'm not joking um, you don't see that set very often I don't see it I bought this in a cash converters for one ninety nine, and it was absolutely um, lovely copy of it as I try and put it back in the box without damaging the box. Maybe later. I don't want to damage it in case it is. Swiftly moving along. Um, Elder Scrolls V Skidim, which I've never played. And it's, those of you who know me know it's not going to be my sort of game. No manual. But again, I think I've maybe got I pick it up for a quid. It wasn't an awful lot. You've all seen Skirim before. There can't be too many people who don't know what Skirim is. Uh, this is from Sega. Uh, not one of the better efforts. The club. Didn't enjoy this in the slightest. I'm not sure why. But I think it's also one of the very first games I actually picked up for the 360. Sort of in the first couple of weeks or so, because it was quite cheap. Um, and I bought it purely on the Sega game, but I don't know, dude. Wasn't really enjoying that one, to be honest with you. I have played better games. Uh, not this one, uh, the Black Eyed Peas Experience. Which, let me be honest with you, there can't be four more scary words in the English language, can there? Uh, but it is a Kinect game. If you want to connect, connect games, this is one you need. How cheap is it? Dirt cheap. If you're paying cash for it, you're paying too much. Um, it's got all the favourite Black Eyed Peas songs on it that you love and sing every day, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's an experience, not a good one. 
if you like sports games there's a, not many sports games in here but this is the Bigs 2 Baseball which I've also got on the Wii I like baseball games I don't mind baseball I don't tend to watch baseball until the playoffs because it's just too complicated to watch like a 300 game season or how long the ridiculous number of games they play uh, this was certainly definitely one of the very first games in fact I think this was the very first game I put on the telly in the background and this is Street Fighter 4 of which I'm no fan of the Street Fighter franchise whatsoever but again this was uh, 99p in a Paul Brokers it's not great condition the box is a bit floppy I'm holding on to dear life the manual's a bit knackered um, the box doesn't close properly but it was 99p you should know by now Retro Bear does not leave 99p games on the shelf unless they're rubbish or games that even I wouldn't buy and then you know you're in trouble this is Stormrise from Sega again Sega making another appearance complete with manual command the conflict on every level says the back of the box here's a game which I thought was going to be immensely uh, much better than it actually was and this is uh, Steel Battalion Heavy what does that say? Armour, I can't remember if it's Heavy Armour or Heavy Vehicle uh, Steel Battalion Heavy Armour, anybody remember remembers Steel Battalion from Xbox days will know there's that superb set with a huge giant peripheral where you've got sort of tank controls and now goes to an absolute ruddy fortune and it did back in the day this is a connect game but it's rubbish it is not very good at all um, the saving grace is complete war inside and out yes that's what you'll feel at the end of it it's not great at all there are better games on connect better examples it's a shame because it's such a, a well known name Steel Battalion uh, what have we got here split second velocity which uh, a lot of people including myself do enjoy it's it's I don't know a racing game you can just sort of put your foot down on again I mean quite frankly split second velocity I'm in those three words in the same sentence and trigger the action you need that game right home straight for this little pile and then we'll, we'll call this video a day uh, South Park the Stick of Truth which again was picked up for not a lot complete with manual That's before it sort of plummeted in price love South Park used to love South Park uh, this is actually RPG which is not my sort of game but it's South Park it's got a sense of humour I like in it I'm happy with that love that game this game I picked up in a charity shop for 30p this is Skate 3 which I think now CEX sale for 20 I think when I bought it for 30p it was trading in for about 8 quid and they were selling it for 15 complete fluke finding this where I did got no interest in it at all whatsoever but uh, I also picked up another game which uh, I'll get to in a second and also Ghostbusters on the Playstation 3 those three games, so this one, the one I'm about to show you in a, in a couple of minutes, and the Ghostbusters on the PlayStation 3, three for a quid. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Uh, Shadow Run. I didn't remember this game at all, actually. I was wondering what it was. I thought, I don't remember this. So, um, chances are I've never played it. It's actually got a, ah, a bit missing off the box there. Broken. Look at that up. No idea you've seen that one. There's the back. Rewrite the rules of engagement. Because I love my Sesame Street games. Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster. Starring Cookie Monster and Elmo. And some other things. And it's not quite as good as season one no manual with it sadly uh, it's a kids game It's. I was more interested in the other one it's got uh, Oscar in and I think Grove was in it as well not quite as much fun as season one I think there's only two Sesame Street games that came out for it this one again an absolute belting fine for 
99p I think it was cash convert it's definitely cash converters one and this is the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection which I've already got which I've got on PlayStation 3 and I've had since it was bought for me for a present many years ago the one issue with this one is actually the classics disc so slightly disappointing with that one anybody who's watched me regularly will know I have severe issues picking up normal label versions with classics discs on the inside uh, but for a pound I wasn't going to sort of turn it down it may not be the pound it may have been cheaper than that uh, but, you know so many different games on here Sonic 1, 2 and 3 Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 Echo 1 and 2 Shining Force 1 and 2 Golden Axe 1, 2 and 3 that's all the games in the bloody compilation Sonic and Knuckles Fancy Star 3, 4, 5 uh, sorry 2, 3, 4 Alex Kid, Shinobi 3, Columns, which has got to be on there, and it all to be Sonic Spinball, Kid Chameleon, Vector Man, and some other stuff on there as well. If you don't own that, or even any of the HD remakes, what are you doing? Uh, I think I got this because it was cheap. This is Saints Row the Third, a game which doesn't interest me in the slightest. But it was complete. And somebody else has written on the disc. Why? Stop writing on discs. Strap it on. As the actress said to the bishop. I know some people love those sort of games, but I mean, not interested. Here's another game I'm not going to play in the dark Rise of Nightmares, and especially not because it's on Connect. We're not going around the London dungeon. I shall never sleep again. Lovely and complete, this one. A bit of a debate at the time. I think I paid a pound for this, and uh, the week before I could have paid 50p for it. But it was a not as good copy. But it's a zombie game. Everyone loves this. You thought you would escape. You were dead wrong. I'm not playing it ever. Why am I playing this one? Resident Evil 5. My goodness me. There's enough games here to... What's it? Require me to reevaluate my pant collection. <laughs> Nicely complete. A fear you can't forget. Certainly, because I'm never going to play it. I think this is actually one of the very few games, possibly, that's not broken, that I bought from a, cha uh, from a car boot sale. Probably the last time I went to a car boot sale. About two years ago, because it would have been the same time that I bought this. I paid a pound for it. Only game I bought from a car boot sale. Uh, Red Faction Gorilla, which is not about insidious mountain animals. I think I did that a joke originally when I picked it up. But it says Smash Authority. Smash Authority. Yeah. And if that's not enough for you, what about Red Faction Armageddon? Which has got nothing to do with gorillas. Or have you seen not seen Planet of the Apes? Yeah, Red Faction Armageddon. These games are so cheap there is life on Mars is there really ah. that'll be ashes to ashes then there is life on Mars and this now right go back maybe go back to what's it remember this I can't remember which one it was now oh that one remember that for 30p the other game I got at the same time was that one Red Dead Redemption the game of the year edition which includes the zombie thing in it Includes Red Dead Redemption, Undead Nightmare, Multiplayer. Two discs. It's also got... The map, as well. And for the uninitiated amongst you. Vestedekedja, Grinstarten. Yes. It's the foreign language version. I think it's the Dutch version. It may even be the German version, I don't know. But, um, because I was so excited to find it at the charity shop, I didn't even bother to read the uh, words on the back. So it says, Game of the Year Prijens. And um, I think it is German, but I'm just going to try and do it. Belief in Epschick, Vihal in Dinardigen van het Wilde Westen. So, yeah, if you know what language that is, I, I, I'm, I'd like to know, and I do apologise profusely for uh, what I may just have said there, because I'm just reading this out on the back here, that could be anything. Um, but, yeah, it's um, 
a foreign language version, but it was 30p. And I've played it, and it does play in English. So it's even bigger bargain. Um, this game looks so bad that I think it's become a running joke amongst those of us who collect 360. It's Raven Squad. A game which looks so cheaply put together that we all need copies of it. I think uh, two or three people picked it up, and then it sort of became a... I must get hold of that because it looks absolutely terrible. It's like a first person shooter. And it is absolutely terrible. That's why you need it in collection. This game I got from Cash Converters for 10p. When they were doing their sale at the end of August last year. Check that video out because that, that's a, you won't believe the amount of stuff we've got like that for 10p. Unbelievable. And I know this game's going to go for so much more. They were selling it for 7 99 for ages and never sold it. And then they put it in their 10p sale. Rambo the video game. And it got the manual with it as well, even better. 10p. I couldn't get enough stuff off the shelves now to book it that day. It's terrible. It's not very good at all. It's like Rambo 4 and 5. They're not very good. But it's Rambo, isn't it? Uh, pure. Which is a Disney racing game. And the only Disney racing game I remember they're doing Mickey Mouse ones, but no, it's it, it's from Disney, and it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. I played it on the PlayStation Three as well. Don't think I own it on the PlayStation. I definitely played the PlayStation Three. Worth a go. Worth a go. A lot of fun. Uh, what have we got here? Right. Um, Rage ah! from the creators of Doom and Quake. And there's three discs, if three? Yeah, three discs in there. And they've all fallen out. Cock. Ugh. Nice disc one, that's probably the most important one of the lot. Just say three, they all fall out and you pick it up again. Not a lot paid for that one. And I can't say I've played it, so I don't know. Uh, there are sports titles I mentioned before. It's Pro Evolution Soccer 6 with well known Philandra for a John Terry on the front of it. And on the back of it as well. So if you get, you know, if you miss a chance to spit on the front cover, you always spit on the back as well. Because uh, I like this series. Pro Evolution Soccer 2015, which I think I'm going to get for very, very little. Do enjoy the Pro Evolution series much more than the FIFA series. It's only Pro Evolution. Uh, probably the most recent Pro Evolution game I've got, actually. Uh, Steelbook time. And I got this out of uh, Game Sale, I think. I think I did. But it may have come out of uh, CX, I can't quite remember. And that sticker won't come off the front, which is really annoying. However, slipcase time. There we go. That's the back of the slipcase, which says, You are the light. I love the Prince of Persia games. They look so, so cool when they first came out. And this is a steel book, and I've got to say, this is an absolute cracker. Uh, I mean, this game is not an expensive game to buy, even with a steel book. If you do get a chance to pick it up, I mean, this is just absolutely blemish free. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there's the manual and the disc on the inside. Everything about that is absolutely pucker. Absolute pucker, mate. Or as they say around here, Boston. Uh, four to go, and then I'm going to go and do something else. This is Prey from 2K Games. I think this is the game I remember thinking I have this and I kept leaving it on the shelf because I had this and then I found out I hadn't got it and um, apparently uh, we are next so there's the inside complete the manual and there's the back of it I can't say I know an awful lot about this and play much of it I think I played it briefly at the time and that was about it so I've not gone back to it uh, this is Plant and Zo Plant vs Zombies Garden Warfare, a game you can only play online, I believe. It's a bit annoying, but again, I did pick this up for a quid, and then I found out that they used to sell it as six. Um, powered by the Frostbite Three engine, 
Um, internet connection and origin account required to play. Oh, so I think it is a an online game. I'm not sure if it's still active or not. I don't know, but anyway, it was there. I was there. It was cheap. We met. We fell in love. Project Gotham Racing Four. What a fantastic series Project Gotham Racing is. I've got the first two on the Xbox. Does that mean I haven't got PGR3? I thought I had that. So many games, you lose track of them. Um, also annoyed because this is the Classics box disc inside the box without a manual. But again, I think this was one of the very first ones I actually bought for the 360. Because uh, I just wanted to get some racing games in there because I love the racing games. And again, this is tremendously good fun. And then one of the, also one of the very, very first games I bought when I was trying to buy steel books and things and, and not sort of waste my time with Plants vs. Zombies uh, is Perfect Dark Zero, a game which, let's be honest with you, had so much hype behind it and just failed to live up to it. That's the case, uh, plastic case, which has come off there. It is damaged. I've, I've got to put a bit of sellotape on the bottom of that. It wasn't the best condition one. But I thought, well, it's a steel book. I'm not going to leave it on the shelf for that price. It is a very nice steel book. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's just lovely. Lovely artwork. Um, a couple of dings in the back of it, but I mean, nothing that's going to sort of make me go, I shan't buy that. I've seen a lot worse than this one. I've got to be, I haven't seen too many better. It's a lot worse than this one. And again, it's got, uh, there's the inside for you. It's got both the discs with it. Uh, and it's also, I think, got um, that as well, which is a little card which came with it. So it was nice to find. Uh, was there anything else in there? Um, no, just the customer services manual. Oh, yes, and there's Perfect Dark a comic book as well. So, again, and I think that, I'm not joking at the time, was like 50p for the whole thing. And I think they were only, I think CX only sold it 50p because it was a bit of a tatty slip case there at the bottom but yeah so fun dabby dozy right well that's your lot then that's part one uh, there will be a part two no doubt about it I've now got to put all these away and start again um, thank you very much indeed for watching I hope you enjoyed that as an awful lot to get through I've whizzed through it as quickly as I can I know you won't get the usual comments. A quick video, it's an hour long. Yes, but there we go. That's as quick as I can do it. Otherwise, I'll just, just be going, games, games. No, we'll not do that. Uh, part two will follow. There'll be more games in that and more of me sitting here in front of the television talking complete twaddle. Um, if you have enjoyed that, as I said about three hours ago, do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and tick the notification bell for more things. If you're a new subscriber, it would be really great if you stayed on board. Uh, if you've already returned before you've enjoyed that hopefully uh, you'll enjoy part two as much as i'll have for making it but for now thank you very much indeed for watching do take care and bye for now So was that better or worse? Worse. How could it be worse? How can that be worse than the first one? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I... Okay, well, yeah, I did say it was the second part when technically the second part was to follow and this actually was the second part as opposed to the third part to follow. But if you remember... Yeah, but... Well... Yeah, well, if I if I could, no, I am a moron. Yes, no, I understand. I understand. Well, no, no, I'll, I'll try to be better. Obviously, you know. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not doing that. But okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Bye bye. <clears throat> that was Lord YouTube. Um, apparently. There were a number of errors in that last video. Now, accuracy, they're my strong point. However, I have to promise you by rule of YouTube contract that I'm back on form for the next video, and that will be the third part, not the second part, and it will be 
as exciting and as exhilarating as these first two have been. Just, just hold that up a bit, would you? Thank you. Let me see it there. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you in part three. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Do take care and bye for now.